Fellow graduates of the class of 41, as we end this happy chapter of our lives, let us try to imagine where we'll all be and what we'll be doing in the year 1956, exactly 15 years from today. Margaret Brewster, most popular girl in the class. The world is her oyster and always will be. Save us a pearl, will you, Maggie? Most likely to succeed, Fred Davis, president of our class. In 1956, he'll still be president of the USA, U.S. Steel, or U.S. something else big and important. Want to bet? The fearless fight and fury that finished off our football foes fates this fine fellow for fame and fortune. Nine Ra's and a Tiger, Jack Fraser. Barna Hall, captain of the chess team, manager of the hockey team, and last but not least, assistant proofreader of this yearbook. Farewell, au revoir, of Wiedersehen, class of 41. Let's make a date to check up on this prophecy 15 years from now. Back to Carson High for a wonderful, heartwarming, memory-filled spring reunion. Every time spring holds her own reunion, I remember you with all my heart. April music Ooh, ah. And I hear those moonlit whispers start Your lips and mine will always meet again In sweet communion At the spring reunion in my heart Every time spring holds her old reunion my heart when the daisies blossom in the rain again you and i go swinging down the lane again when the trees are filled with april music and i hear those moonlit whispers start and mine will always meet again in sweet communion at the spring reunion at the spring forever and every new endeavor uh, our pride and you will never know defeat boom boom tiger t tiger i and g e r spells carson high team 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 <coughs> class of 41 what a year that must have been nothing but oddballs Fluttering down at the height of festivities. Sensational. My idea. How about helping me blow up the rest of these? Oh, I'd like to, Al, but I gotta get the film ready for the show tonight. Miserable form. Kids just don't have it anymore. Well, where's the movie projector? Over there. that anymore, do they, Maggie? They don't play them like that anymore, either. Rock and roll, rhythm and blues, progressive jazz. Jack, if this film is for the show tonight, we only allowed ten minutes. 
Now, these pictures gonna bring back memories. You know, Ethel covered every big game from 38 to 41 with a close-up lens. You know, in some of the plays, I'm telling you, my head's this big. Jack. It covers the whole screen. Jack, did you find the reel of the graduation ceremony? Yeah, it's a little underexposed, but you can make it out. Pardon me, Maggie. They're at the post and ready to run. Jack, look, the show... There's the kickoff. The show doesn't go on until 10 o'clock, and if it runs too late, That's I... That's Fred Davis making the catch. He laterals to me, and I'm off. What a combination, Davis and Frazier. Jack, listen, Here's I... Here's one of those close-ups. I've got to get back to the office. Oh, what a run. 30 yards, 35, 40, 45. Mary. Down in the many in the nitty-bitty pool, fancy it a bitty and a mama bitty poo. Fancy it a mama bitty poo. Oh, how could I ever forget those words? Do you mind if we start again, girls? Mary, listen, I have to leave. Would you try to get Jack down to 15 minutes of movies? Oh, some dress rehearsal. Elsie hasn't shown up. You won't be here for your number, and my costume isn't back from the cleaners. I feel silly in this outfit. Couldn't we just wear regular dresses? But that's the whole idea, to do the show just like we did it at the senior prom. There's something faintly ghoulish about this. Let sleeping dogs lie, I say. Oh, for goodness sake, it was only 15 years ago. Now listen, be sure to rehearse the acts in the right order. First comes the school song, then the barbershop quartet. Barbershop trio. George Eckhart has the virus. Oh, that's too bad. Well, then comes your number. And, let's see. And then comes Paula. Oh, <laughs> and her inimitable impersonation. Listen, you guys, I'm out of this town. I'm running my way, sane. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew if it was supposed to be Cagney or Edward yeah. G. Robinson. Oh, Maggie, the senior prom program. First dance, Bill Hofstetter. That was a beautiful man. Have you seen him recently? Del Harvey, Jack Frazier, Jerry Trimble, Fred Davis. Wow, all the big wheels. Gosh, Maggie, you sure had your pick. Yeah. Well, I'll see you tonight. Right. Well, go, 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 go! That old boy. Oh. I'm sorry about this. Margaret. Yes. Margaret, I'm very sorry. But it's out of the question to serve liquor here tonight. Now, as faculty advisor, I... Liquor, Miss Stapleton? Well, I don't understand. Uh, well, um, he must have it confused with some other affair he's catering. You see, what we wanted was a real nice fruit punch. Okay, Joe, take it back to the truck. Excuse me. Oh, oh wait a minute. I'm late for an appointment. I want to talk to you about the punch. Miss Stapleton, we won't keep you any longer. I know how busy you always are. Oh, but there's nothing I like better than discussing recipes. Well, uh, you see, what we want is a very special punch. All kinds of fruit. Oranges and lemons and strawberries and cherries and Smirnoffs and pineapples and limes and... Oh, uh, you just leave it to me. Bye. Bye. Goodbye, Miss Stapleton. Margaret. Oh, I'm so glad you included strawberries. They add a je ne sais quoi. <gasps> Margaret, what are Smirnoffs? Oh, um, Smirnoffs? Well, um... You know what a papaya looks like? Yes. Oh. Well, uh, a smear it off is... Um, <laughs> it's kind of hard to describe. I have to hurry. I'll see you tonight. Goodbye, Margaret. Heads up! Company. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Brewster is still out of town. Would you like to talk to Miss Brewster? One moment, please. Miss Brewster, Farmers and Merchants Bank again. It's gone up to the second vice president. Let me know when the president calls. Well, it looks all right to me. They'll settle for five and a half percent. I'm interested in a 12-bedroom house with an indoor swimming pool and a private landing field. Barney! <laughs> I couldn't wait, so I took an earlier plane. Oh, it's so good to see you. But you're just the same. How do you do it? Hard work, clean living, lots of exercise. Oh, I never should have given up hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Give me ten minutes to clean my desk and we're off. Fifteenth oh, reunion. Can you believe it? Fifteen years. How long since we've seen each other? Ten? 
12. Mm. And what's happened to this town anyway? Supermarkets, ranch houses, nothing but strangers <laughs> walking around. And they lost Petting Park. I looked all over for it, but it's gone. They just lost it. Subdivided by the Brewster Realty Company. Fine thing. You're loaded and the kids have no place to go. Back of the ice house. <laughs> Uh, Maggie, did my letter sound as if I were hitting to stay at your house? Oh, of course not. Well, I was. <laughs> the thought of staying in a hotel in my own hometown, well... Pardon me, Barney. Yes? Is that a firm offer? Fine. Close the deal. Thank you. Hmm, just like that. Oh, I'm a big shot when Dad's away. He'll be back tomorrow, and will he be glad to see you? Sign the letters. Go ahead and sign. Your guest wants a martini in broad daylight for a change. <laughs> Hubby doesn't approve of daytime drinking. Oh, how is Norman? Hmm? He's just fine. And the children? The chi... Oh, yes, the children. Uh, by purest chance, it just happens that I have a few pictures. Oh, Barney. They're beautiful, just beautiful. Jenny's the oldest. Uh, she hates me. <laughs> Bill is accident prone, and Eric and George are a team. They make booby traps. Open any door in the house and something conks you on the head. I'd give anything in the world to, to see them. You must be very proud. Maggie, why didn't you ever get married? Oh, dozens of reasons. College, the war, my brother Eddie getting killed. I can finish this up at home. Jane, would you call Mother and tell her I'm on my way home with Mrs. Forrest? Thank you. And? Oh, my miserable attempt at a career. Coming back home, getting so comfortable, helping out in the office. And then, of course, I've traveled a lot with Mother and Dad. Before one trip's over, Dad's playing the next one. Last year, I went to Europe. Then, of course, I haven't met anyone. Have you looked? Not recently. Steam bath, massage, maybe a tiny little nap. Pedicure. Oh, I knew I forgot something. Gee, I hope they have an extra girl to do it along with the manicure. It's going to throw me way off schedule. <laughs> oh, problems, problems. Oh, if people only knew what a lady of leisure goes through. How do you like your martini, Barney? Dry? Just pour in the gin and whisper the word vermouth. I'll make it, Mother. Mmm, imported vermouth. But of course. What would you like for lunch, dear? Anything, just so it's fattening. Oh, this is too good to be true. I can't believe it. No cooking, no cleaning, no Normie to pick up after. You make it all sound so attractive, I'm leaving right now to file suit for divorce. Tell your father no hard feelings, Maggie. Maggie, cancel your appointments and come along with me, please. I was just thinking, when I was at the beauty shop yesterday, somehow or other I overlooked getting a pedicure. I'll meet you there a little after three. Oh, wonderful. I wish I could start out with you, Barney. But I've got a red-hot prospect for a house that is a real lemon. Mm -hmm. ah! You remember the Davis Beach House? Point Surrender? <laughs> Fred's been trying to get rid of it for three years, ever since his father died. Mm. Fred Davis. Most likely to succeed. And uh, he almost did with you, if my memory doesn't fail me. Me? I had one date with him. Mm -hmm. At Point Surrender. You know, I still don't know how he talked me into going there. But I sure know why I ran out. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard he used to put on quite a production. Dim lights, move music on the phonograph. <gasps> and there was no mistaking the mood. Chopin's Nocturne in E-flat. Da 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 Hey, what's he like now? Oh, I haven't seen him in years. He's been boycotting Carson. We get letters about his house from Boston, Chicago, south of France. I believe he's in New York right now. Well, time's wasting. Oh, uh, be sure that it's well chilled. Olive or onion? Uh, perhaps one of each. Proceed. The entire area has been cleared of booby traps. Uh, well, it'll take a little time, but I'll be all right. And I'll have to go back. Barney, I, I have to run. I'll be late as it is. I'll see you at the beauty shop. Bye, Maggie. 
Oh, ask your mother to call me, will you, or I'll never get out. You're a martini, madame. Oh, how terribly sweet of you. Thank you very much. Afternoon. Maggie. Maggie Brewster. Fred Davis. Well, it isn't possible. You look just the same. So do you. Is that why you didn't recognize me? Well, I'm just so surprised. Um, I was straightening up. I'm going to show the house. Why didn't you tell my father you were coming in your last letter? Well, I didn't know it then. It was a sudden impulse. You see, I got tired of my job back east and came out to look into another one in San Francisco. I hope it works out. Our prospect will be here any minute. May I use this to dust with? Well, that's got paint on it. I've been working on the boat. Well, get me a clean one and a broom and hurry, Fred. I've really got him on the hook. He's going to buy the boat, the house, the works. He's already been here, Maggie. I told him the deal was off. You what? Have you ever been homesick so much that it, that it hurt? I, I had to get back here. I just had to. And when I drove in here today, I don't know, just, it got me. Especially my old boat. I've been working on that prospect for weeks. When that sailboat looked at me with those sad, loving eyes, Maggie, how could I say, sorry, old girl, you're going to have a new skipper. I bought him lunch last time, cocktails the time before. I'll pay you back. What about a first installment on the cocktails right now? No, thanks. I didn't really plan it, Maggie. It just, it just sort of happened. Working on the boat and everything. You can understand what I mean, can't you? Sure I can. You sure you want to have a drink? I can't right now. Of course, if I take this job in San Francisco, I, I'll have to sell the place anyway. It's a little too far for weekends, but I'm hoping I won't have to start for a month or two. Will you help me find another prospect then? I'll do my best. Thanks. Sit down for a minute. Cigarette? Please. You know, I was just thinking, Maggie, maybe I could stall him on that job until fall. Oh, that would be nice. With a good sailing weather coming on. Would well, you like sailing? Well, I don't know very much about it. Oh, it's great. With that cool westerly breeze stroking your cheek, you get a tingle up and down your spine. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Why don't we go for a sail now? <laughs> Why don't we? Take off your landlubber's shoes. I've got an old pair of sneakers you can wear, jacket, scarf if you want one, everything you need. I still have a little more work to do on the boat, but I can have the mast stepped and have it ready to launch in less than an hour. Oh, gee, Fred, I forgot I can't go sailing with you now. I'm due at the beauty shop at three. Oh, that's too bad. Couldn't you phone them? I have to go, but I'll see you tonight. Tonight? Fine. What time do I pick you up? Well, don't bother. It won't be necessary. I'll meet you at the boys' gym. The boys' gym? Well, that's where we're having the reunion. Oh, no. Is that tonight? Couldn't you skip that, Maggie? Skip it? I've been looking forward to it for weeks. 
I can see it now, Maggie. Bold-headed classmate comes in. Somebody's bound to say, Hey, yet, Curly. Hey, any of you characters seen Carlotta? Boy, was she stacked. Weighed in at 185 pounds this morning. Have you got anything on for tomorrow night, Maggie? I'm sorry, I have. Well, maybe we could get in a sale during the day. Anytime you say. I'd love to, but I have to work. Well, I'll give you a ring. Nice seeing you, Maggie. Nice seeing you, Fred. Bye. Bye. Well, I didn't get to sit in the park, and I still haven't finished shopping. <laughs> Mrs. Forrest, please, you've smudged another nail. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello, Mother. I'm with Barney at the beauty shop. We'll never make it home in time for dinner. We'll grab a sandwich. Oh, tell Barney I planned the most fattening dinner she ever heard of. Lentil soup, lobster thermidor, french fries, no salad, pie a la mode. Is that Maggie? Hey, Kimmy. Hi, kitten. Dad. I thought you were coming home tomorrow. How was the trip? Did you get any golf in? No, I couldn't wait to get back. Will you be long? Well, I was going to go on with Barney, but just a minute. Barney, I hate to walk out on you, but I hope Walk you... out on me? Dad's home. Oh? Do you mind? No, go ahead. Dad, I'll be home in 20 minutes. But tell Mom not to count on Barney for dinner. Right. Barney won't be home for dinner. You get here as fast as you can and give Barney my love. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dad. Barney Hall. <laughs> she was always such a, a dizzy little kid. How'd she ever get a man? Harry. Yeah? Could I interest you in another trip? There's a smoldering blonde bombshell just dying to get away with you. Me. <laughs> I'm way ahead of you, May. We leave June the 10th for Mexico. Maggie's always wanted to go. Well, I meant just the two of us. They leave Maggie here all alone? I think it's a good idea, Harry. Well, what would we do, ride sightseeing buses? I mean, for crying out loud, May. You don't even play golf. You sure it isn't my stand? No, no, it's all in the grip. Now, there. Now, that's the ticket. Try it that way. Beauty, that's it. No hook, no slice, right down the middle. Oh, Dad, this is wonderful. You couldn't have found a better present. More coffee? No, thanks. Wonderful dinner. Glad you liked it, Mr. Brewster. Sure missed your cooking while I was away. <laughs> kind of missed you, too, honey. You better. Wish I'd known Barney was here. I'd have got her a little something. Say, she got any kids? Four. Four? <laughs> wow. The jaws and the trap certainly clamped down on her. Say, I almost forgot. Farmers and merchants called just before you got home. The president, no less. You certainly handled that beautifully. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, here's one aging businessman with no problems about retiring. Even if you get married, you can still Even have... if I get married? Well, I mean, when you get married, when you find somebody who measures up. Maybe I'm the one who hasn't measured up, Dad. You? Why, you're still the prettiest and the smartest and the most popular. Yeah, I'm the most popular. Maggie, that was Janet on the phone, wanted you to babysit tonight. I told her about the reunion. Thanks, I'm going up to dress. May, what's wrong? Something's bothering that girl. Girl? She's 33 years old, Harry. Peggy's wedding. I've worn everything in there to somebody's wedding, somebody's anniversary, somebody's baby shower. Maggie, did it ever occur to you that you may have already met the right man? The boys you knew at college and the ones you've met since? One tiny detail. 
The few it might have worked out with neglected to propose. The few? Oh, no, Maggie, there have been many. Mother. Do you know how I knew your father was the right man? He lived across the street. He had one of the first Model T Fords in town. He was fun to be with, and he wasn't engaged to anyone else. In other words, he was available. Maggie, listen to me. There are lots of men. Name one. Just one. Anyone. I'm sorry. Oh, Mother, I I'm sorry, too. I, I guess I'm just tired. I wish I didn't have to go to that miserable reunion. <laughs> And who is it used to do those impersonations? Oh, Paula Kratz. <laughs> Betty Davis. That's the one that always got me. <laughs> well, Maggie, you went back to the bon ton. Wait till you see what I got. Later, Barney. I haven't even bathed yet. She didn't even notice my hat. My word, how very distressing. Oh, you look ravishing, darling. Mm, such a doll. Mm. I ever tasted. I'll have another cup. Glad you like it, Miss Stapleton. Oh, it's simply delicious. Are you wondering about that tang? It's the Smirnoffs. Hello, Edward. Miss Stapleton. Honey, I don't dance very well, and you don't know a soul here. Let's go to a movie. You're not going to sell any automobiles at a movie. You know I don't like to play connections. That's why you've only sold two cars this year. Tiger! T! Tiger! I! And G! D! R! Spells cars in high! T! 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 Hey, boy! Why you drink, Pete? Twisted. Greetings, Edward. Pete. What does he drive? A new Mercury. Find somebody with an old Mercury. Got men. Sorry. Same old Maggie, still the most popular girl. Well, I can see you haven't forgotten the Lindy Hop. Is that what this is? Yeah. Hey, how much you and me hitting the late spots after they run us out of here? What do you hear from Ethel? She won't be back till Wednesday. Let's go. What's the matter, Jen? Oh, I'm just trying out one of the old steps. Oh, thank you. Oh, Jeff, would you excuse me? I have to work out something for the show. All right, but you owe me a dance. I'll meet you at the snack okay. table. Edward, you'd better keep away from that punch bowl. And you live so near, maybe you've got some material that'll come close enough to matching. I tell you, it shrank at the cleaners. Here, let me try it, Grace. I'm the same weight I was then, practically. Oh, and I'm the same age. Darned hairdresser keeps putting in gray hair. Breathe in. Oh, it's impossible. More. I say, forget the costumes. What's wrong with Maggie's wearing... going to wear her costume. I think it adds something. Don't you agree, Maggie? Yes, I do. Definitely. Oh, this is silly. Jack, crazy. Hello. Barney Hall. Barney Forrest, now. I finally get to meet you after all these years. Well, it's good to see you. My husband wouldn't get to be here. You're on his all-time All-American. Well, it's too bad he couldn't make it. <laughs> Somebody had to keep the home fires burning. <laughs> Two snags at eat. We've drunk our fill. Let's dance. Oh, come on, Alice. Tuck her in. Oh, 
Don't breathe out. Well, hurry. I'm almost finished. How does it look? It looks fine. Do you think it'll hold? You're in great shape as long as you don't turn your back to the audience. Well, thanks, Maggie. Dance, Maggie. Oh, I'm sorry, Nick. I have this one. May I have this dance, Maggie? I'm sorry, I... you changed your mind. I didn't have much choice. I called San Francisco and they said no job unless I start right away. I have to leave in the morning. Oh, that's why you came. That's right. I didn't leave without seeing you. The Brewster Realty Company at your service. I'll see that your house is back on our active list tomorrow. But I'll be on your inactive list. That's what my list is. Oh, sure. This may blight your whole life. Bug Maggie. We've got one night in town. Won't you meet me halfway? Fred! Hey, Fred Davis, am I glad to see you. Hello, Jai. See, do you realize how long it's been? Gosh, you're looking great, fella. Well, how's the leg? Huh? You know, the one you broke in the Oregon State game. Did it heal up okay? They usually do, don't they? Hello, Barney. How are you? Fine. Gee, Fred, I didn't know you were in town. Well, nobody else did. Why'd you keep in touch, fella? You weren't sore, were you? Sore. <laughs> this guy breaks a leg in his first college game, so they put me in, and pretty soon I'm off on a 90-yard run with an eight hitting the big hero. Life's a funny proposition, eh, Fred? Yeah, hilarious. <laughs> oh, great guy. Yeah. Maggie, why don't we crawl out of this swamp of nostalgia and go find a nice, quiet bar? Oh, Fred, why don't you give it a chance? Everybody else is having a wonderful time. All right. Fred. Oh, hiya, Sidney. Good to see you. Oh, it's good to see you, boy. Hi, Maggie. Hi. Try the punch, Fred. Tell me something, Sidney. Are you having a wonderful time? Well, there are interesting aspects. For instance, nearly everybody here look as though they ought to be their own fathers and mothers. <laughs> That's very funny, Sid. I merely meant it as an interesting observation. Another interesting observation. Polly Smith hates me. She just sits and glares at me. Fifteen years ago, I nosed her out as valedictorian, and she still resents it. Well, maybe it's your husband she resents. He's falling asleep. Well, perhaps the two facts are interrelated. If she didn't have a husband who fell asleep at parties, she might not care about not being valedictorian in 1941. Sidney, you're probably a very good lawyer. As a matter of fact, I'm considered quite brilliant. Hi, Curly! Hi, you don't really want to stay here, do you? Of course I do. Hey! What? Will you? Oh, sorry, old man. Forgot about the leg. Oh, the leg's been okay for 12 years, Jack. 12 and a half. How about it, Maggie? I can't, Fred. Well, I can. As a matter of fact... Uh, cutting in. Uh, I mean dance, Maggie. Uh, sorry, Fred. Edward, I have this dance. Just one turn around the floor for old time's sake. Oh. 20 seconds to play. They throw and you intercept. And I'm yelling at you to lateral to And I goofed. I remember. Well, live and learn. I'll see you later. Pretty fair halfback, that Davis. Edward. Still driving that beat-up old crate, Maggie? Must be a year and a half old by now. I'm sorry. You'll have to excuse me. Hello. Got a little sticky with ivy-covered memories in there. You won't get away from them out here, if that's what you want. This all seemed so important 15 years ago. Well, it was important. Yeah, it got me a Class A scholarship to college, full tuition paid, snap job, a salmon-colored convertible, and a guarantee of a commission in the Navy. If I hadn't made the mistake of breaking my leg in my first varsity game, Hey, is Zimmy still making those nauseating malts, those Ipecac-flavored delights? The same as ever. <laughs> I'd love one. Still the same? Still the same, Zimmy. Ever taste anything like it? Oh, never. They say nothing brings back memory like us all. Not true. Things you ate when you were young. 
Getting drunk. Even the smell of them, right? Yeah, even the smell. They all try to copy Zimmy, but they can't. Ice cream and flavor you can buy, but the powder. <laughs> ah, the powder. Wouldn't they like to know what goes in it? That'll be 60 cents. Taxes on me. Keep the change, Zimmy. Oh, thanks. I gave you each an extra shot of powder. Thanks, Zimmy. Well, drink up, Fred. I have to get back. I'm in the show. Don't tell me there's a show. Well, you, that's fine. You can really sing, but the rest of them... My one night in town. Not Paula Kratz and those impersonations. You're certainly entering into the spirit. The spirit of what? Boredom for the sake of old Lang Syne? Look, Fred, I'm sorry you feel that way about the reunion. I told you I've been looking forward to it. Please don't spoil it for me. Goodbye, Simmy. Bye. Nice to see you. Hurry. Back. You want to know why I think you've been looking forward to this reunion? No. All right. Why? Because you're lonely. And there you are to fill the void. Oh, let's drop it, Maggie. Why do you say I'm lonely? Tell me, Fred. Forget it, Maggie. Please, Fred, I want to know. Well, you're 33 years old. You've never been married. You work hard all day. And at night, at night, there just isn't much to do. Oh, you call up people, go for a drive, take in a movie. Find something else to do, like... Like babysitting? Like babysitting. But none of it's any fun. None of it. How do you know so much about me? I was just describing myself, Maggie. Except I don't babysit. Down in the meddy in an itty bitty poo, fem fee it a pity and a mama pity poo. Fim fed the mama pity fim a poo tan and it fam and it fam all over the dam. Boop boop did him dad him what him chew. A boop boop did him dad him what him chew. A boop boop did him dad him what him chew and it fam and it fam all over the dam. The itty pity look at all the fails and twist as they should they turned on their tails. Back to the poo in the meddy day fam and they fam and they fam back over the dam. Boop boop did em dot em what em chew. A boop boop did em dot em what em chew. A boop boop did em dot em what em chew and they fam and they fam back over the dam. Down in the meadow in the itty bitty poo, flam flee with the furlies and the mama pretty too. Flim, flam the mama pretty flam a boot, and he flam, and he flam all over the dam. Boop, boop, get him down and want him. Shoot, boop, boop, get him down and want him. Boop, boop, get him down and want him. Oh, Maggie, how wonderful. Isn't that the same dress that you wore when you did your number at the senior prom? The very same. Everything's the same, except the age. Oh, the age. You haven't changed a bit. Well, neither have you. Oh, how right you are. <laughs> oh, uh, Maggie, do you mind if I don't drive home with you? Jack offered to take me. I won't be late. There's a pile of track shoes over there in the corner. See if you can find a pair that fit. Oh, are you kidding? All he ever talks about is his wife. Uh, hey, why don't you and Fred join us? What makes you think I'm going with him? Dam, oh, they fam, and they fam, right over the dam. Hey, girls, great. What about those kids, huh? <laughs> And now another voice from the past, or rather a dozen voices and a dozen faces in one talented package. Paula Kratz and her incomparable impersonation. Paula Kratz. Hello from Hollywood, and thank you, Jack. Oh, it's so good to be here with you tonight. My first guest needs no introduction. Now listen, you guys. Nobody fools around with me, you see. I'm the boss. Yeah. It's James Cagney for a buck. Town. You got a bet. I'm Humphrey Mark. Bogart. Yeah. Try to muscle in on my territory and you'll go for a ride. And I don't mean to point surrender. Yeah. And now, I want you to meet the dame who's the brains of this outfit. Gracie Allen. Yeah. Oh, did you know who that was, George? 
That was Edward G. Robinson. I have someone here I know you're all just dying to meet. And here she is now, the exotic Denny Davis. Don't call me exotic. I'm really neurotic. I'm horribly cruel and mean. When I do someone dirt and he's terribly hurt, I'm the happiest girl on the screen. In regards to the letter, I did even better. I shot a man deader than Hades. I've got Oscars galore, and I'll get plenty more. Just playing despicable ladies. If you'd like something... She was nervous there was the night of the senior prom. Hey, you don't want anybody to see you before your number. To me, Bad luck. To be evil and vile. In fact, you could say, I'm a stinker. Then all at once it happened. What a catastrophe. For me and Jeannie had to whisper goodbye. Cause Jeannie got promoted and she left Carson High. And now I'll say goodnight to all of yous wherever you are. Thank you, Jimmy Durandy. And may I say thanks to all of you for listening. And I do mean you. Good night from Hollywood. And so we say farewell to Paula Kratz. And as the sun sinks below the horizon, we journey once again to the golden past. This time on Wings of Song. My favorite and yours the most popular girl in the class, Maggie Brewster.
We're going to take a little stroll down the beach. We won't be long. See you. It's such a beautiful night, Fred. Let's join them. Oh, just a minute, Maggie. I have something I want to show you. What is it, Fred? A letter about that new job. You see, they want me to sign a contract for two years. And there's some other clauses in it I'm not too keen about. I'd like to get your opinion. Finley and Sloan, I've heard of them. Third largest advertising agency west of the Mississippi. Well, I am impressed. There's something about signing a contract that's First like... First six sign... months to be spent traveling, survey of clients' factories here in a... Sorry, Maggie. What are you sorry about? He just kissed me. There's nothing so terrible about that. I just don't want you to think that I was I'm 33 to... and I'm single and I'm available. So you kissed me. You can't be put in jail for that. I kissed you because I wanted to very much. 15 years hasn't changed you a bit. The same routine, same husky voice, trembling with emotion. And the same girlish indignation. You're the one who hasn't changed, Maggie. Not a bit. Maggie. Have you seen my handbag? Maggie, please listen. There's nothing to talk about. There's plenty to talk about. Now listen, I'm not going to try and tell you that I've been pining away for you all these years. But when I walked in this room today and saw you standing there... Oh, stop it, Fred. That could have been anybody. That's not true. Did you know I lived in New York a year? No. I worked in a bookstore, Brentano's. You know, it's surprising how fast you learn to tell the serious customers from the ones who just come in to browse. Barney! Barney! She's been having such a good time. Why break it up? I'm not breaking anything up. Jack can take her home. I just wanted to know that I'm leaving. I wish you weren't. I can see why you don't want to sell your place. This is wonderful. At least I got in a little sailing today. It was great taking the old boat out again. Say, so how about a little demonstration? No, thanks. Just browsing. I object to that word, the way you used it before. It just doesn't apply. It doesn't? No. If you're looking for something that's hard to find, it takes a little shopping. And uh, as higher your standards are, the more you have to keep looking and looking. Now, unless you get to know a person real well, how are you going to know if... Am I making any sense? I wouldn't know. You see, with a woman, it's different. To me, the idea of a casual romance, no matter how you try to justify it... You missed the point entirely, Maggie. I don't mean casual. Promiscuous? You're deliberately twisting it around. And it's not so different for a woman. It isn't? No, I don't think it is. Suppose I told you I'd been browsing for the last 15 years. Do you remember Nick Hanley, Billy Johnson, Joe Ellison? Ah, good old Joe. We browsed for almost a month. Maggie. Then there was Phil and Cliff and Al. Ah, oh, but now I've found you, and you don't really mind all the others, do you, darling? Uh, ooh, ooh. You turn your angle? Yeah. Think you can walk on it? I think so. Let's try. All right. Mm -hmm. What are the wild waves saying? You tell me. Well, what are they saying? I'm gonna look for a seashell with a different message. Thanks. I don't know what I was trying to prove, but I'd made up my mind I was gonna try it for a year. It wasn't so bad during the day. No, it never is. Those nights. You have the longest nights in New York. You know what I do at night? Wander around from one bar to another, looking for something I don't know what. Bump into a lot of other people looking for the same thing. Or some nice couple who invites me to their home to meet a girl who always turns out to be just divorced. Or she yaks all evening about how men like me hate women in business, I'd rather see them chained to a kitchen stove. Or maybe she drinks too much. How did it happen, Fred, to both of us? I mean, surely in all these years, you must have met somebody it would have worked out with. I must have, too. The class prophet really missed out on us, didn't he? The most popular girl and the boy most likely to succeed, sitting on a dock 15 years later, wondering what happened to them. 
Well, I certainly wouldn't say you haven't succeeded. That wonderful new job you've been offered, it sounds absolutely Oh, wonderful. they all sound great at the start. Pretty soon, the gloss begins to wear off. You get a trapped feeling. Well, isn't that something we all have to live with? <laughs> Not me. Whenever I get that, I just take off. I don't even stay around long enough to say goodbye. You mean you just walk out without even a word? Without a phone call? People can talk you into changing your mind on the phone. If you ever decide to stop working for your father, just leave town. Send him a telegram. I'll remember that. It's getting kind of chilly out here. Ankle okay now? Fine. Is that what happens when the gloss wears off a romance? Telegram? You don't think I'd do a thing like that, do you? I withdraw the question. I'd just as soon not know. Oh, they're, they're all over the place. They're oodles. Oh, there's so many different kinds, Morning. so many different colors. And this, I think I'd better go see if I can find something to carry in there. What a night. Nothing I like better than gathering seashells. They turn out like that when I scramble eggs. Aha! Uh -huh. They all try to copy Brewster, but they can't. The eggs, the milk you can buy, but the powder. Ah, the powder. Old family secret? Passed down from generation to gen... Ketchup? Sure. On eggs? Brings out the flavor. Gives it that... What was it Miss Stapleton used to say? That uh, je ne sais quoi. Dear old Miss Stapleton, la mère fait la, la cuisine. cuisine. The, the mother is doing the, the cooking. cooking. Les enfants étudient le leçon. The children are studying their lessons. Le père, what was the father doing? I forget. Le père. I was just wondering, Maggie, what would happen if two people, both with great expectations, that went bust if they got together? I mean, after sort of pattern is already set. Can you break it? I don't know. Maggie? Maggie, we're gonna leave. Oh, but Barney. I've got a little headache. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it's not too bad. We, we found the most beautiful seashells. Yeah, well, you really struck it rich. Good night, Fred. Good night. The key's under the mat. If the folks are up, tell them I'll be home soon. Have fun. Nice to have seen you, Barney. Nice to have seen you, too, Fred. Hey, how's the back? Point surrender. Nice westerly breeze out there. We don't often get those this time of year. Be a great night for sailing. Interesting observation. Thanks for a wonderful time, Jack. Good night. Barney, there's a place I know. A little three-piece combo. Sensation. Too late, Jack. Oh, you wouldn't want to leave town without hitting this spot. Carson's never seen anything like it. I'd love to. Really, really, I would, Jack. But it's too late. Just for a little while. Come on. No, Jack. Tomorrow, then. What about tomorrow? I'm sorry, but I can't. Good night. Okay, I'll see you at the 25th reunion. Jack! Call me in the morning. Good night, Barney. Hi, Barney. Oh, hello, Mr. Brewster. Well, where's the kid? We went out with some friends after the dance. I folded early. Early? Any eligible bachelors in the crowd? Witty, wealthy, and mad about the girl? 
I don't know if he's wealthy. Fred Davis. Fred Davis? Well, many's the time I've cheered him on to victory. And I'm back in the rooting section again. I thought he was in New York. He came back today. Good night. Oh, Barney. Yes? Uh, May's fixed us up a little spread downstairs. Oh, thanks a lot, but I couldn't eat a thing. Good night. Good night. Good night, dear. Harry? You've had enough coffee. You'll be up all night. I just want a sandwich, May. I'm famished. Draw two. All right. So I'm not famished. May, something popped into my mind and I can't seem to get it out. That Davis kid. You remember when he overturned his sailboat that time and had the Coast Guard out half the night looking for him? Oh, Harry, he was 17 years old. Well, he's still unstable. Those letters about the beach house. First one from some publishing house in Boston. And then an advertising agency in Chicago. And then in New York. He's no steadier now than when he was 17. She's very precious to you, Harry, isn't she? Well, that's a silly question to ask. Isn't she to you? Oh, very. But I'm looking forward to the day when she leaves us. She should have a home and children like Barney. Ah, oh, Barney's an idiot. She is. She's an idiot. She married the first thing that came along. A vegetable. <sighs> Maggie had it all over her a uh, hundred different ways. She went past every girl in this town a hundred miles an hour. Or did we drive her to go a hundred miles an hour? You mean, did I drive her? Oh, I'm as much at fault. But Harry, like the way she plays golf, first she has to break 90, then 80, because you break 80, and Eddie would have, too. Do I ask her to? Do I ever force her to do anything? No, but you want her to. Be honest, Harry, you want her to. Ready about. Hard to leave. <laughs> I'll never get it. You're doing fine. If I had one more hour, I could make a real sailor out of you. Well, there's nothing I'd like better, but I've really got to get back. You could phone and say you'd be late. At this hour? By the time you put into shore and find a telephone. There's a telephone in the lighthouse. What do you suggest I tell my father? We ran out of wind. Tell your father you're with somebody you like, who has to leave in the morning, and you'd like to be with him as long as you can. There's nothing I'd like better, Fred, but it really is so late. You better take over, Maggie. Put your feet up and get comfortable. You said I could take it. Coming about. The wind changed. Seems to me it's blowing the same way. Better stay up there, Maggie. Fred, please. Is there anything I can do? Yeah, keep your fingers crossed. I've got to make another tack to miss those rocks up there so I can get it to the beach.
right. What about the boat? It's the garbage strake. The what? The garbage strake. The seam next to the keel. Must have sprung a leak along the centerboard trunk on the port side. Look, all I want to know is can you fix it? It won't take very long. As soon as the tide comes in, I can get to it. When will that be? Hey, you! <coughs> hey, didn't you see that boy? <coughs> what do you think it's for? <coughs> there ain't no boats allowed here. Well, what do you know? Hello, Collie. Oh. Hey, you guys. Hey, old boy. Well, if I was a dog, I wouldn't make a fuss over no guy. I wouldn't even put a postcard in the mail in two years. Thanks. Don't mind if I do. Have a good one, Maggie. Well, my garbage streak opened up and I had to beat you. Have you got anything I can caulk it with? Uh, we find some. Well, come on. Let's get up to the lighthouse. He's got some clothes up there that ought to just about fit you. Oh, that doesn't mean I hope he has. Have you, Collie? Yes. Just so happens. Sure, sure, we were worried, but everything's all right now that I know you're okay. Where are you? A lighthouse? Is that what you said? Is, is this your idea of a joke? The, the starboard what? The starboard break? Is she all right? Uh, the gar garboard? Uh, well, never mind about that. Uh, when will you be home? I see. Well, all right. Goodbye, Maggie. Well, you might have let me say hello. What happened? Where is she? She's in a lighthouse, dear. What? Yeah, with that wealthy, witty friend of yours, Fred Davis. Harry. Oh, everything's fine. They'll be on their way as soon as they get their clothes back on. Harry. What's he after? A special award for neatness? Have you got any more paper clips? No, oh, I'm sorry. Wouldn't you know, a couple of good card players come along and this has to happen. Three times he's been out checking on that boat. First thing you know, your clothes will all be dry and I'll be sitting here playing solitaire. Much as I like poker, I just soon he did a thorough job. That boat's been watertight for a half an hour. But he ain't never satisfied. Ah, he's always been like that. Say, how about a game of crib? All right. Just until he comes, you know. Love it. You've known Fred a long time, haven't you, Mr. Collier? Uh-huh. Since he was about eight, oh, maybe nine. He found out I knew all about kites. Used to drop in quite often, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, his kite had to always be the best. Oh, sure. It had to go higher and stay longer than any other. That sounds just like him. Yep. Get to the head of the parade, even if you break a leg. Like that time he played football in college. Oh, now, wait a minute, Mr. Collier. That could have happened to anyone. He had no business being in that game. He had a sprained ankle. Bad sprain. Anybody else been walking on a cane? Oh, no, not him. No, sir. What happened? First time he gets the ball, Ankle gives way, six guys pile right on top. Boom! All the hair brain. Come on, discard. Hair brained. You wouldn't change him if you could. Oh, wouldn't I? When you have to be the best in everything, nothing's ever good enough. Huh. Hi. Well, I thought you'd be dressed in. Paper clips. <laughs> I thought you'd be dressed and ready to go by now. In wet clothes? Come on, get seated here. Let's get this poker game to going. I was hoping my watch was fast. Maggie, do you think you'd better call home again? Oh, I told Dad it'd be quite a while. I can't tell you how sorry I am oh, about this. don't be silly. I wouldn't have missed this card game for anything in the world. You want to know something? You are missing it. We've had a mess of conversation around here, but mighty little action. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, not on a lady's dress. Come on, boy, get down.
Wet clothes, huh? Maggie, you better get in there and get dressed. We should be on our way. All right. And me with three jacks. <laughs> oh, well, the poker gave me no good unless it's got five in it anyway. Maybe sometime we'll have a nice big shipwreck. Oh, you gotta go back Gus. to the lighthouse. Come on, you gotta go back to Collie. Go on back, Come boy. on, Gus. Don't Collie worry, boy. wants you. Go back. You, go. you can't go with us, old boy. You'll have to stay here. I'll be crying first thing you know. You look so sad. Yeah, Gus and Collie both. Go on, boy. Go on back to the lighthouse. Go on. We'll be back, Gus. We'll be back real soon. He just doesn't want us to leave. That's all there is to it. It's them, all right. And there's the morning paper. That big mouth newsboy will have this all over town. Harry, come back to the table. And pretend that this is just a normal, everyday occurrence? I think she ought to know that she's caused us a little anxiety. Harry, please. Hello. Good morning. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. I know how worried you must have been. Just so you're all right, darling. I'm all right. I'm fine. As a matter of fact, I'm wonderful. You might have invited your friend in, Maggie. Or didn't he want to come in? Well, nobody came out for the newspaper. I thought maybe you might be sleeping. I did doze off for a bit after you called, but when you wake up at 6 o'clock and your daughter's still out... I said I was sorry, Dad. Let's not talk about it now, Maggie. Come and sit down. We'll talk about it after you've had some rest. I think we better talk about it now, Mother. Fred and I are getting married. Married? Maggie! I'm so happy for you, darling. So very, very happy. We're leaving today. You're what? Fred's starting on a new job in San Francisco tomorrow, a wonderful job, and, well, he'll be traveling for the first six months, and we just don't want to wait that long. But you just met him last night. We knew each other in school. How well? What difference does it make? They're in love. May, for crying out loud, this is the most serious decision she'll ever have to make. You don't uproot your whole life just on an impulse. Oh, it isn't an impulse. When did he propose? How long have you had to think it over? Eight hours, two hours, 20 minutes? I've had all the time I need, and all the advice. Harry. Uh, maybe you'd better fix her some breakfast, May. All right, dear. I'm sorry, kitten. And I want to wish you all the luck in the world. Oh, Dad. Dad. <laughs> All the luck in the world, Maggie. Oh, thank you, Dad. <laughs> when are you leaving, honey? Well, I was going down to say goodbye to the gang at the office as soon as I packed. Fred's going to pick me up there at 11. Well, it's a little early for champagne, but uh, we'll work something out. Holy mackerel, the farmers and merchants meeting. That's at 11. Oh, I forgot all about it. Wow. I'm really going to be lost without you on this one. Well, I'll just have to stay. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. Well, it won't take long. No, you've already made definite plans. Definite? <laughs> we don't even know where we're going to stop off to get married. What? You mean that you haven't even figured out... Oh, well, out Fred's you're checking up on the nearest place in Nevada. Too bad that it has to be so hectic. 
They want him on the job, right away. Oh, you're missing out on so darn much fun. Parties, showers, picking out a trousseau. Dad, don't you think I know? If you could only wait a couple of months. But Fred wants me with him. He's starting on a new job in a new town. He's sort of bounced from one job to another, hasn't he? Well, that's because he won't settle. He wants the best. But will he settle down? That's the question. I'm going up to Pat. Maggie, listen. No. I remember a few other hectic Dad, managers, please. friends of yours, during the war. Sweethearts going overseas. Boom! Justice of the peace. How many of them worked out? Thanks for wishing me luck. You take Barney. Two weeks after she met him, they were married. If it was any good, would she be so happy to get away? All I ask is think about it, Maggie. Hello. Yeah, just a second, please. Maggie, it's for Barney, Jack Fraser. Barney? Barney? Hmm. Well... Reunions break up later around here. Telephone. Jack Fraser. Tell him I'll call Bet. No, oh, I'll take it. I had the most wonderful dream. I dreamed about booby traps. And it was heaven every time I got conked in the head. Normie dropping things all over the place. Tobacco was closed. Pipe cleaners was wonderful. Party! Must have been up in my mind last night. What am I going to tell him? Hello, Jack. Say, I feel bad about this, but something happened. I'm all tied up today. Yeah, well, I don't know when we can get together. I, I just don't know what to say, Barney. Oh, that's all right. Goodbye. Brewster Realty Company. Yes, Mr. Blake, Miss Brewster's in, but I've got news for you. Oh, just a second, please. Oh, Mrs. Brewster, I'm so happy for you. Thanks. You know, I go a lot by first impressions, and the moment Mr. Davis walked in that door, oh, I... Oh, he's here? He's in with Mr. Brewster. Oh. Oh, um, Jane, put that in one of Maggie's bags, will you? I want it to be a surprise. Love that. Mr. Blake, Miss Brewster's getting married. Well, that must be very important. Oh, hello, Mother. I thought I'd get as much work done as I could before the meeting. Well, that's just fine, but I would like a little time with you and Fred before you go. How's he getting on with Dad? Well, he won't be here till 11. Think it over, Fred. I'll do that, Mr. Brewster. See, the way I see it, we could make it... Hello! May, shake hands with the groom. Shake hands with him? <laughs> oh, dear, I'm supposed to save the tears for the wedding, but <laughs> since I won't be there... I sincerely wish you could be, Mrs. Oh, Brewster. so do I. Hello, darling. Hi. Maybe she'll be there at that, eh, Fred? I have to be out in the waiting room when Fred came in, and uh, we had quite a little chat. What about? Well, you remember the old saying, you're not losing a daughter, you're gaining a son? That's what I kept telling myself. And then all of a sudden, it came to me. Something you wouldn't know about, Fred. I had a sign made a good many years ago that I never had a chance to use. Brewster and son. He was killed in the war. Now you know what this would mean to me. Dad, you mean you want to take Fred into the firm? Well, I've got to find somebody to take your place. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Fred, you don't know how often Dad's talked about finding a man like you, a man who knows advertising. I'm sorry, Maggie. I don't think it would work out. Oh. And I agree with him, Maggie. It wouldn't. There's only one way to find out. Give it a trial. Yes? They're here. Uh, tell them to wait. Farmers and merchants. Maybe Fred ought to be in on this. Harry, Fred, give it a chance. If you think the real estate business is dull, it really... That isn't it. Well, what is it, then? Maggie, don't you see what's happening? First, it's a meeting. Then why don't we have lunch together? And wouldn't it be a good idea if we stayed over and got a fresh start in the morning? <laughs> well, wouldn't it? Certainly, if you call San Francisco and tell them we're getting married, they... Oh, would... they'd wait a day or two. But then what? A farewell party at the country club? What's wrong with that? Give her a chance to say goodbye to some of her friends. And have a few heart-to-heart -heart talks with her dad and begin to feel it ought to be his way or else. Stop it, Fred. My father offers you a job and you make it sound as if... Maggie, all he wants to do is to hang on to his little girl. You know where he wants us to live? No, I said you could stay with us and... until you found a place of your own. We never would. And if that's what you want, Maggie, I don't go with the package. I don't think it matters to you what I want. 
You see it his way, don't you? The way you always have. But what's your way? I leave with you right now or not at all? That's right. Oh, Harry, how important is the meeting? Tell her to go. I'm not telling her to do anything, May. You don't have to, Mr. Brewster. You just closed the deal. Fred. Hasn't he, Maggie? He hasn't done a thing. It's you. Is it? You said this is how it always happened before. You get that trapped feeling and you want to run away. I told you what I want. I want to marry you. I'd rather get the telegram before we're married. Maggie, I told Regret you... I to inform you, Gloss has worn off romance. It was a grand reunion. Many thanks. Goodbye, Maggie. And that's it. Goodbye, Fred. Hello, farmers and merchants. You keep out of this, May. If it's the real thing, Kitten, he'll be back. Oh, let me alone. Go after him, Maggie. Don't even think about it. Well, that's good advice. Don't even think about it. Man in his 30s, he's still floundering one job after another. That has nothing to do with it. It's one measure of a man, isn't it? I suppose so. Of a woman, too. Well, I'm in my 30s. Am I such a great success? You bet your life you are. Dad, what is so special about me? What is so earth-shakingly special? Do you still think I'm the prettiest girl in town and the most popular? Well, take a good look. I've got lines in my face and gray hairs that come back no matter what I do. And a man comes along and sees me not as a 33-year-old real estate agent, but as a pretty girl and he wants to marry me. And you act as though I'd be doing him a big favor. I just want you to be happy, Maggie. That's all that I ever wanted. Oh, Dad, it's more than being in love. We need each other. If he hasn't changed his mind, you'd better hurry. He's getting in his car. Harry. I hate sightseeing buses. And I'd love to learn how to play golf. <laughs> 